Danielle Kyrie, what are the stars of Chicago Fire? The show is returning February 23rd. We haven't seen a new episode since middle of January. I mean, it feels so good to have the show return. Yeah, it does. I'm very, I'm very, very excited to have it, you know, back on, back on the air. I think it's, I think it's time. Do you think it's time? Did you get a lot of messages on social media as far as when they said, you know, January 19th, we'll see you back at the end of, you know, towards the end of February of like, we can't wait. Like, what's going to happen? I mean, it's kind of a constant thing. Like for me personally, I have been, <laughs> since since our break uh, was happening, I kind of took a little bit of a break myself from social media. So I may have gotten less than I normally would have, but usually that does happen. But, you know, we're a show that like films as the season is, you know, coming out. And so sometimes we need to take a break. And then also there was Super Bowl and Winter Olympics and, you know, it needed to happen. But there, there, there's a lot going on. You, you are back. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect for Ritter uh, this upcoming Wednesday and, you know, maybe tease a little bit about through the rest of the season. Oh, man, what episode? This is, what, episode 13, I think, right? So, yeah. um, I mean, in, in this episode, <laughs> I mean, so, right, there's the moment that we love of, of, our, of our fave trio, uh, Gallo, Violet, and Ritter. Um, and sometimes we do know that Ritter gets stuck in the middle of those two of his two friends. And so we do see him giving a little bit of, like, relationship advice you know about the, that whole situation and uh uh so seeing him kind of like have to navigate that again is like a, a big part a part of this episode and it's it's really fun it's like some hijinks kind of ensue a little bit so we'll get to check that out let's talk a little bit about relationships Ritter's relationships and R Ritter's romantic life and how that progressed on the show and just how the fans just uh embrace that that's those storylines um I mean I think I'm I'm not necessarily I'm not surprised by it, right? Because especially when you when you like a character, right? Or when you start to really get to know them, you become invested in their life and just the things that are affecting them um emotionally or or whatever it is. And so um the fact that there has been a lot of interest in, you know, well, what's going on with Ritter like romantically, what's happening? Um, I think that's totally normal to me. I am totally like grateful and like humbled by that by that interest I think um just because you know it, sometimes it can go either way with um a queer character right but I don't know I think there's a lot left to explore on that front and I and I feel like the writers are doing a really good job of handling it with with care and with intention um but I think we'll get to see some fun stuff and maybe even some steamy moments like go down so yeah we'll just have to wait and see but yeah. well, we'll have to wait for, for the for the rest of the season uh, to check that out are you involved in the writer's room as, as well too as far as story arcs and you know maybe certain pointers on on Ritter's character um I like to say um you know obviously they're in LA so I can't like be there be there but um, they are, they can be really, really collaborative when it comes to, because, you know, doing the show as long as I have and some of the other uh, casts have, like we, there is an element of really sort of intimately knowing the characters more and more um, as, you know, as, as well as the writers do. And so sometimes little moments of offering perspective, I think, um, are really well received. And so some of the storylines can become a little bit more collaborative. Um, which is great. It's really great to take a little bit more uh, stake in in our characters, like lives and what's happening, you know, to them and with them and all of that. Um, so it can be a very collaborative experience. Like I just got off a uh, phone call last week with with one of the writers, just being like, "Oh my gosh, like I love this storyline." I'm like, "Blah blah blah," you know, just kind of giving feedback, and they're really receptive of that. And so that makes the environment, you know, showing up to work really, really lovely. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, the character of Ritter. He was only supposed to be on for a couple of episodes. He ended up, you know, expanding and then becoming a, a series regular. Is this beyond your wildest dreams as far as creating this character and being able to portray him on, on screen? I, I think, you know, I think it's yes and no. Um, when I first got, yeah, because when I first came on, it was like, okay, this is going to be, you know, quick, a quick moment, a quick job, you know, um, a little boost in my personal economy is what I, what, what I refer to to it as, um, but you know, the more that I just kind of kept coming back and sort of sinking my teeth into the character, the more that it just felt right. You know, it really did just kind of feel like I, like I belong here in this space and in this world and, and, and a part of this story. And so the more that I got to experience that feeling, the more that it just became like, oh no, this is like home, you know? Um, and so, yeah, the, that part of it just kind of took over and then it just became a part of my world in a way that was just really organic 
Um, and it didn't, it didn't surprise me whenever they find, when they, whenever they made that decision to be like, okay, it's series regular. We want to see this character for a long time. Like, let's do this together. Um, it was something that it felt like it was coming all along. That, that is amazing. You know, I, I love that that's part of the, uh, part of the show. Uh, but someone who's also pulling double duty on, on Chicago Fire and also on, uh, and just like that, David Eigenberg, you know, Lieutenant of the show. He was also on that show as well too. Are you a big Sex and the City fan? Um, well, who isn't, right? Like, <laughs> who hasn't, like, seen the show? Um, I, th I think it's such a cl uh, huge pop cultural phenomenon that you'd, you'd have to be, like, nuts not to get it. But, um, yeah, it's like, do I know the storylines intimately? Like, no, probably not. But, yeah, I've seen, I've seen some episodes that I've loved, yeah. Because they're, you know, people love him on, on Chicago Fire, but people really love him, you know, just as much on the Sex and the City. And there was all, all that justice for Steve because, you know, they felt like his character, you know, wasn't given the, the love that, you know, I think a lot of the fans supported. What was it like, you know, maybe some of the conversations on the Chicago Fire set about that? Um, a lot of jokes. Uh, listen, like we're, we're ball busters over on, <laughs> over on fire. Like we kind of rib each other all the time about stuff. Um, so <laughs> a lot of jokes, which, which um, David takes on like really well, really good about that. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that there are people that are super passionate about the characters and like, but here's the thing, like, you know, messed up stuff happens to characters all the time. And so we kind of have to just look at it like, oh, that, that's life. And so I think that that was an instance of that for uh, that character over there. And the fan base maybe was like a little like, but wait, like we love this guy because David does a really, really good job of making his characters so likable, you know, um, and so sort of multifaceted in that way as well. So I get it. I totally get <laughs> why people are upset. I've read a couple of think pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the final thing I want to go ahead and ask you about the West Chicago fans, because anytime I post anything uh, regarding any of the shows, uh, there's just so much love for all the characters. And, I, you know, there's so many, you know, fan pages and fan sites out there. What's it like, especially the messages and the support from fans uh, being part of this West Chicago universe? I mean, it's dope. It's like, it's like your best friend, like gassing you up when you have that like right outfit and you're about to step out, you know, on the night or in the town or whatever. It's like that same energy, it's that same vibe of people just kind of like gassing you up and being like, like, yo, like, I really love this character. I really love you on the show. I really love like your work, you know, um, through the lens of, of this, this world and this story. Um, I think when I first got on the show, it was maybe like a little overwhelming. Um, but like now it's just, you know, it's a private. We have some of the best fans in the world, like the Shy Hearts, they really go hard for, you know, all of the shows and on all of the characters. And I mean, it's even gotten to the point, right, where sometimes the storyline, like I was saying earlier, something might happen to the character that's like, oh no, and like people are upset. Like they'll be like, why you, why you do my boy Ritter like that? Or why you, you know what I mean? Like that, those kinds of comments, but we love to see that at the same time because it means that we are, you know, really still engaging our, our audiences and, and our fan base. And that makes it all the more fun and more collaborative. Uh, and it helps to build that one Chicago community even more. So I love it. A absolutely. Thank you so much for your time today. Catch Chicago Fire returning on February 23rd. We waited a long time for the new episode, so you cannot wait to watch on Wednesday. Can't wait. Can't wait to see you all there. I'll be live. So <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for your time. All right, take care.